as humans, we're basically walking paradoxes. So often we want two things that we can't have at the same time. Like, if you're like me, you know the feeling of wanting to know exactly what you're getting for your birthday, but also wanting to be surprised. Life is full of competing desires. And sometimes our competing desires affect the people we care about. But fortunately, with some intentional communication, we can prevent competing desires from straining our relationships. And if anyone's wondering what to get me for my birthday, I don't not want coffee or wine or kittens. I'm Cassandra Ryder, and this is Study Hall, Intro to Human Communication. When we're torn between two or more things we want, it can feel like these desires are duking it out in our minds. And in the field of communication, we refer to the interplay between two seemingly incompatible but connected needs or values as a contradiction. And contradictions happen all the time both within ourselves and between people. That's because we all have competing desires. So contradiction is a normal part of life and relationships. Like our hypothetical friend Marshall loves spending time with his boyfriend Nico, but Marshall also needs lots of time alone to recharge. Basically, Marshall wants togetherness and uh, apartness, which means there's a contradiction between two things that Marshall wants in his relationship. That impacts Nico, and because our contradictions affect the people we're in relationships with, we have to work together to manage them. That's not necessarily easy. In some situations, it can be hard to manage contradiction in a way that meets everyone's needs. But it's important to recognize that contradiction is not the same as conflict. Remember, conflict happens when people have, or think they have, incompatible goals, opposing viewpoints, or a lack of resources. Conflict happens in specific situations, like when there's a fight over who left the dishes in the sink or which way the toilet paper should go over or under. Of course, if you don't replace the roll so the toilet paper pulls from the top, you are a monster. End of story. I don't make the rules. Things like dishes and toilet paper are specific situations that can be resolved so the relationship can go on. And if things can't be resolved, the relationship might end. Either way, situations involving conflict are often temporary. But contradictions are ongoing in relationships because people are full of conflicting desires. So there are things we manage rather than resolve. Like in Marshall and Nico's relationship, the contradiction that Marshall feels between his desire to spend quality time with Nico and his competing desire to have some space will probably never go away. It's just part of Marshall being an introvert. So balancing being together and being independent is something that Marshall and Nico will have to learn to manage together if they want their relationship to work. We can think of contradiction like a rubber band stretched between two people. As you work together, you move closer and take the tension off the rubber band. But if you don't manage the tension, you can keep drifting apart until the rubber band snaps, resulting in conflict. Ultimately, conflict and contradiction aren't the same, but not managing contradiction well can lead to conflict. So for instance, when Marshall starts canceling his weekly date with Nico to get his alone time, even though they agree to spend that time together every week, that could cause conflict. Marshall isn't managing his competing desires in a way that respects Nico's needs. They depend on each other to find a balance between their competing desires. And when Marshall repeatedly puts Nico's need for quality time on the back burner and lets his desire for recharge time totally take over, the balance gets thrown off. Navigating these contradictions can be tough. Luckily, we can use the theory of relational dialectics to help us understand how relationships are maintained through communication. And as part of establishing relational dialectics theory, in 1988, communication scholar Leslie Baxter and Barbara Montgomery identified three main contradictions that are part of many relationships. For instance, the contradiction between autonomy and connection refers to the way that people want independence, but also want to be close to others just like Marshall and Nico. The contradiction between autonomy and connection is super common, especially early on in romantic relationships. When we first get to know someone we're interested in, it's all about connection. We want to be around them all the time. We're super excited to learn more and more about this adorable, charming, amazing person who makes us happy. But as the relationship matures, most people need time away from their partner so they don't feel suffocated. Like, even though your partner is amazing, you still have individual needs and other relationships to keep up with. As we saw earlier, Marshall needed more autonomy, or independence, a lot sooner in the relationship than Nico did. 
which is why he started canceling their weekly dates willy-nilly. And it's possible that Marshall will always need more autonomy than Nico, which is okay, because everyone's needs are different. As long as Marshall and Nico communicate about what they need, they'll be able to manage the contradiction around connection and autonomy respectfully. But if they don't, that's when conflict can come up. The good news is there are lots of ways to manage this contradiction. For instance, scheduling quality time and respecting your partner's need for alone time are great ways to maintain a balance between connection and autonomy. But the tension between our need for connection and autonomy isn't the only type of contradiction to be aware of in order to prevent conflict. There's also a push and pull between our needs for openness and closedness, which we can think of as expressiveness and privacy. Expressiveness is all about our need to open up to others so they really get to know us. A big way we feel valued in our close relationships is by being seen for who we truly are. After all, we don't want to hide our addiction to pickles on PB&J sandwiches forever. So when we find someone we feel safe with, we share important things about ourselves to show them that we want to grow even closer. It's really hard to form a trusting relationship without expressiveness. Like, how can you be sure you aren't dating a Scooby-Doo villain if your partner doesn't open up about their past? But privacy is all about keeping some parts of who we are to ourselves. Having privacy can help us explore ideas and form opinions without worrying about others' judgment. Like, without privacy, I wouldn't have experimented with pickles on PB&J and discovered that it's a delicious combo. Having some degree of privacy helps us maintain our personal identities within our close relationships. And there are always going to be some things we don't want to share. And just like there's give and take between autonomy and connection, for most people, opening up is something we do over time. Like early on in a relationship, we might talk about our interests and passions but we'll probably wait until we know someone better before we share our most embarrassing moment or worst childhood memory. Those experiences are pretty private. Most of us want to know that our vulnerability will be met with kindness and respect before we start peeling back those layers. For instance, let's say Marshall loves to talk about his amazing childhood memories of family gatherings and festive holiday celebrations. But when Marshall asks Nico questions about his childhood, Nico clams up and changes the subject. That's because Nico's childhood didn't have those kind of awesome memories. And even though Nico wants to be able to talk to Marshall about his experiences, those memories are pretty painful. So to find a balance between expressiveness and privacy and avoid letting this contradiction escalate into a conflict, Nico could explain to Marshall that he needs to open up about his childhood slowly over time. And Marshall will have to be understanding and accepting. But it's important for people in all kinds of relationships to communicate about their needs for expressiveness and privacy. For example, by having conversations about off-limits topics and revisiting those boundaries over time, friends, coworkers, romantic partners, and more can maintain privacy while making sure they're still sharing and connecting with each other. Finally, there's the third contradiction that's common in close relationships, which is between change and predictability. This contradiction relates to our desire to have new and spontaneous experiences and the equal but opposite desire for routine in our relationships. Every relationship has some degree of predictability because we all have habits that people we're close to pick up on after a while. Like maybe Marshall leaves the car keys in the exact same place every time he gets home from work. And Nico cries every time they watch a sad movie. And when we learn other people's habits, we get a feel for what we can and can't expect from them, which builds our trust in each other. Like Nico always knows where to find the car keys because he expects Marshall to leave them in the same place based on his behavior over time. And Marshall always brings a box of tissues to movie night. In most relationships, there are some big things that we want to remain predictable, like our partner's affection towards us or how we handle finances. But a relationship without any novelty can get boring after a while. Being spontaneous in our relationships can help get us outside our comfort zones in ways that help us learn and grow together. For instance, say Marshall and Nico have been super busy at work, so they order takeout for supper every night. Nico can tell Marshall's frustrated by the takeout rut, so he plans to surprise Marshall with an amazing home-cooked meal. And even though Nico accidentally sets the chicken on fire and nearly burns the house down, they have a great night trying something new and testing out their fire extinguisher. When the situation is right, predictability and spontaneity can make both people in a relationship feel loved. Overall, autonomy and connection, expressiveness and privacy, and change and predictability are common contradictions in relationships, and not just romantic ones. 
and understanding the three categories of contradictions outlined by relational dialectic theory and how they work allows us to create balance in our interactions with others. And that can help us have healthier, happier relationships where everyone's needs are being met, even if that means looking the other way during a pickle and PB&J nosh session. Ultimately, when it comes to contradictions, none of us are mind readers. We have to keep the lines of communication open about the competing desires that affect our relationships. That's because our competing desires are always ebbing and flowing, which means our feelings about those desires can change too. And feeling that push and pull between our desires is a normal part of being human, which means it's a normal part of human relationships. Sure, we're all contradictions, but that doesn't mean our relationships are doomed for failure. Relational dialectics gives us the tools we need to spot the sources of disagreements in our relationships and find solutions for them that make our connections with one another even stronger. That way, we can accept the people around us for who they are, even if they have strange snack habits. Thanks for watching Study Hall, Intro to Human Communication, which is part of the Study Hall Project, a partnership between ASU and Crash Course. If you liked this video and want to keep learning with us, be sure to subscribe. You can learn more about Study Hall and the videos produced by Crash Course and ASU in the links in the description. See you next time.